everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint some pansies, a subject we have done before but which is a never ending source of joy. Um, we've had some really heavy rain just lately and a lot of the pansies outside have uh, got a bit battered but um, I've collected a few this morning just to show you uh, some of the amazing varieties of colour that you can find in a pansy. And what I like about painting them is that you can make it up as you go along. You don't have to stick with any one particular um, variety of uh, pattern. This one is just cream all over with some very delicate um, purple lines. One thing they all have in common is a yellow center with a green um, dot in the middle, and that's worth remembering. Um, a lot of them are bluish, purplish, mauvish, like this one, which has got uh, a little bit slug eaten probably and a bit battered around the edges, but that just adds to its character. Um, the back petals, of which there are altogether five petals, three in the front and two behind. The back ones are plain and the front ones are attractive to the bees, giving them guidelines so that they know where to go to get the, uh, the nectar. So that's always very handy. And uh, this one's very dark. The idea of that one is that the bee is attracted to the very bright yellow center in contrast to the velvety dark color around it. And this one is closed up. It's not quite, uh, not quite showing off its beauty. It's been completely nibbled, probably by the dog. Um, then looking at the leaves, let's find a decent leaf. Um, they've got indented edges, kind of scalloped, uh, an elongated oval, a light green, sap green with a bit of yellow in really, if you want to reproduce the color exactly. And this one's very typical too with the three yellow leaves in the front, mauve on them and mauve behind. This is the most difficult to paint in the sort of style that I use where you allow the paint to run because when mauve and yellow run together they tend to make a rather unpleasant greyish brown colour. So I don't do that particular combination very often. Um, I tend to stick to blue ones and I don't have any blue ones um, at the moment, although I think they're out the front of the house but I haven't got any in the back here. Um, this is the painting that I did a while ago, which I'm going to um, attempt to som somewhat reproduce. It's much smaller than this in reality. This is a photocopy, but you can see from this photocopy that it's a very loose painting. And um, I've let the water help do the work with the paint rather than interfering too much. So we're going to do something a bit along those lines today. So I'll just remove my models from the, from the place of action and uh, put my board in position. Now you might say I'm economizing on washi tape because I've only put it on the corners but that's because I don't really need to have the tape all round because I'm only going to be painting in the center. You could probably call this a bit of a vignette. I'm going to use um, a fairly hard pencil, it's an H because I don't want the lines to show too much when I'm drawing. Uh, the poppies, they're a very simple shape, it's just a guideline really. And here I've got my selection of paints that I've chosen for these, these, uh, I said poppies again, didn't I? When I say, when I want to say poppy, I say olive and lemon, I get all these things muddled up. I know what they are, these are pansies. Um, the, I've chosen these colours to do the pansies, I've restricted my palette somewhat. Um, we've got two greens here, sap green and olive green both of which we can mix with transparent yellow and quinacridone gold to give us a very wide range of greens. Then I've got cobalt blue, um, dioxazine mauve or purple and permanent rose. So this pink will go with the mauve to give a more lighter color like this. And you can add to the cobalt blue to that to give a darker. I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. <laughs> 
sorry about that. Um, so that's the colours. I've got two little dishes here for mix, mixing in if I need to do that. I've got my brushes here, which are my usual draw well brushes. Uh, link to the manufacturer in the description below. I'm using the Maestro as well as the Saintograph um, just to give it a bit of a workout. I'm not used to this one. This is the better version of these, but these seem to me to be perfectly fine. But anyway, so we will play with that. Okay, so let's get started and uh, draw some pansies. I have a, a little um, pattern to follow when I draw my pansies and um, it is a simplified way of doing it. So you start off doing two back-to-back -back brackets for the center of the pansy and that gives you your center part where you've got your little green dot and then the yellow around it and then you're going to do, first of all, you're going to do the petal which is in front which is like almost like an inverted heart but you're going to draw um, irregular lines. You're not going to draw it um, with um, straight lines because they don't have straight lines. So you're just going to scribble in a guideline which is something like that and then behind there are two petals although the pansy pretends that there are only one. So we will do that and then I'm going to put another one over here somewhat overlapping. Like that. And uh, I'm going to draw a stem coming down here. Um, and then I'm going to put a stem from this one. Let me have a look at this as my model. Um, one stem, two stems. I do st strongly recommend that you don't only use me or Pinterest as your source material for your painting um, because the real thing, go away fly, is, is much more convincing. <clears throat> Um, okay, so we'll put, there are lots of leaves, there's plenty of leaves here, as my husband would say, and there's a, um, a bud, my husband um, isn't a native English speaker, and although I've been married to him for more years than I care to remember, um, and he's spoken English the whole time, he still makes um, comical mistakes, bless him. And uh, I think the older he gets, the worse they're getting. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, Magdy. Okay, so that's a bud. Um, could, could, could be a bit on the small side, but I think that'll be okay. Make that a little bit longer. There we are. And um, I'm going to do another one over this side here, which is going to be um, on the side, like like this one here. So we will uh, abandon the the idea of the back-to-back -back brackets for the minute because we're doing the side to side. So we'll just draw in the back of the flower like that. Then we'll put another leaf in here. If you want the sketch, if you don't want to be bothered with doing it yourself, you can download it for free from the website. No obligation. Free. Okay. And then perhaps we'll put another bud up here. Um, as you go along, you have to kind of think about the design a little bit. So, 
like that one like that okay so now um, that will do I think and the first step is to the way I paint them usually I'm going to wet the paper and wait for that to soak in a little bit. I'm not wetting the center, although I'll have to leave that for a bit. And if you look at it slightly sideways on, you can see where the water is going. And what you want to do is you want to let that soak in a bit, not too much, but just for a little while until um, the shine has gone off a bit. And then you can do your wet in wet work when the the shine has gone off a little bit. And um, I'm looking, I rather, I really quite liked this lilac-y one there. I'm going to try to do something similar to that. Of course, inevitably I'll be disappointed because it won't work out quite right. You know that feeling? Oh, I've got this thing in my mind. <clears throat> And I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to do that, but again, probably not. So I'm just going to mix up some violet with, I'm going to put a little bit of um, permanent rose in with my mauve. And you do always need a piece of paper handy. It doesn't matter if it's got other things on it, but you need a piece of paper handy to test the color. And that's, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go with that. And then all I'm going to do is keep my fingers firmly crossed and then drop in, dabbing it like this, paint around those three front petals. And I'm hoping that's going to spread all the way out to the edges. And then I'm going to take a sharp implement. In this case, I've picked up a feather and I'm just going to scratch veins. Two reasons, one, there are actually veins on the plant flower and secondly, it helps the paint flow. So we'll leave that alone for a minute. And then um, the back ones, we'll just paint them plain. And we'll let the paint from here bleed a little bit into there if it wants to. It doesn't look particularly impressive at this particular point in time. Um, but we have to have faith. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Doesn't matter. Go over it in gouache. Make something of nothing. So then now I'm coming back in <clears throat> with a little bit of um, paint and I'm just going to go around the edges of the petals. And I might take a clean brush and just irregularly interfere with this so it looks a bit more natural. <clears throat> we leave that for a minute. <clears throat> now my first one that I'm using as my model. I don't think there's any problem in doing a painting more than once, do you? It's a really quite good idea. When you first put paper, uh, water on the paper, it will soak in quite quickly and disappear perhaps even. And you might think you, well, so then you just add a bit more and you let that soak in. It depends on the um, amount of sizing 
um, the chemicals that they put in the paper to make it controllable. Depends on how much sizing there is, how, how, um, how much water soaks in and how the paper stands up. Okay, now the one at the back was, um, just had blue around the outside edges. And the back petals were blue, more blue like that. So, yeah. And then I had a dark, very dark um, blue color. So I'm gonna do that with um, cobalt blue and quinacridone mauve. And I'm just going to drop that in, in the middle like that. And if it has so happened that the, um, the paper has sucked up too much, never fear. Just take a clean brush and add some more water and drag that out. And you can see there the, um, the mauve and the blue somewhat slightly separating, which is really a nice effect. So we'll leave that like that. And having done that, I'm thinking to myself, I need to put a little bit, I fancy this, a little bit more colour in the middle of this one. Let me let that move in its own way. Maybe we'll just soften this edge here a bit. So then um, we've got a bud up there and I'm going to just pop some blue in there for that particular little bud and then we'll pick up some lilac for this one um, here. And um, this flower here I think we will do in a very nice, uh, almost a Wedgwood blue. And that one I'm just painting like that because it's not in any way open. So we'll just let's put some color in there and let that bleed a bit and just dab a little bit more there, a little bit more there. Try not to interfere too much. And now we're going to go to the greens for the petal for the leaves and so on and um, I'm going to go with transparent yellow and olive green could just as easily be quinacridone and I'm going to start with this with plenty of yellow because I think I think there's quite a lot of a, a yellowish hue to these but we put first of all we put in this yellowish color And then, having done that, I'll come back in with um, something bluer. So we'll add some blue to that and just drop it in in occasional places and let that bleed as well. And then we might do this leaf like that as well. And then we might pick up a little bit of real blue just to add a bit of shadow there, variety. This one will start off with blue and then we'll go to green. Same reason, just variety. And when you want to do the um, veins in the middle. Just take your magic marker, free from the birds, no charge for a feather. And 
Then once you've put in the veins, you can come back and just add a little bit more shadow on one side. And the key is really to remember less is more. Get the color in and leave it. You can always add more detail later if you want. So I'm just, just now coming in behind this flower with the stem. And we will, again, start with yellow. Could just as easily have been quinacridone gold. That's also nice. This leaf was a bit crumpled. So just do the sepals there. If it runs, that's good. I think that always looks nice. And then just bring that stem down. Add a little bit more green in a few places randomly. Not exactly randomly, but it looks random. And we'll leave all that to dry. Now we should be able to go back to the centers of the flowers and paint them yellow. And because my Transparent yellow has got dirty. I need to reach for some cadmium yellow, which is probably better anyway, because cadmium yellow is um, more a little bit opaque, has a bit more body, stands out a bit more. And since we've only got these couple of spots of yellow, it might as well be strong and then in the center of them it's a little dot of green now while you've got strong green on your brush you can emphasize some of the lines if you want if you're not happy scratching the paper to do the lines you can draw them in but that can be uh, necessitate uh, what's the word a steady hand and quite often I think I just prefer the indented lines so there we are we're going to call that more or less done we might put a tiny bit more blue up there and there and And then we resist the temptation to ruin it. I'll just put that in there. And then the next thing we need to do is nothing. We need to let it dry. I'll just make that a bit darker there where it goes behind the flower and here. Yes. Drying naturally is the best thing. And if you want to put some spatter and stuff like that on there, you can do that. Um, that always looks nice. And that is going to be very pretty when it's done, when it's dry. It's a bit like a cake really, they don't look much when you just finish mixing them, but after they come out of the oven, they're amazingly transformed. And the same thing happens with watercolor paintings. You have to know when to stop at this stage when you think to yourself, oh, I just need to, I just need to, I just, uh, no, stop before you think you're finished. Wait, see what happens when it's completely dry. And then you go in and do the last few touches. That's my tip for the day. So there we are. Um, please, if you enjoyed this, click like, make a comment and uh, subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get to hear about everything um, when we release a video. A new one comes out every day and um, we are really enjoying putting our material out there and having the interaction with all of you lovely 
people, mostly ladies, it has to be said. I don't know where all the men are. Perhaps they don't like watercolour more for them. Come on, men. Join in. It's worth it. Um, so there we are. I'll stop rambling now. And uh, the dogs have fallen asleep. They think we're here for the day. So bye for now, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.